Hello friends and welcome to this new video. Today I'm going to show you how you can draw a drawy column using AutoCAD. We're going to draw a 3D column and it's going to be a very fun project uh, that will help us to practice using 3D in AutoCAD. Make sure first that you are in 3D mode by clicking on the gear on the bottom or by clicking the command uh, WS current and selecting 3D modeling. Once in 3D mode we want to start this circle command so C enter I'm going to draw a circle here, we're going to make it 50 units of radius, okay? And now, the next thing, I want to create another circle, see, enter, okay? And it's going to be from one of the quadrants of my first circle, so shift right click, I'm going to select quadrant, I'm going to select this quadrant, and my circle is going to be 5 units of radius, okay? Now this is going to be one of those indentations that the column or the Doric columns used to have. Next thing I want to repeat the circle around my bigger circle. So I'm going to use a polar array. So click on polar array, select the smaller circle, press enter. And now the base is going to be the center of this bigger circle. And I'm going to select 22 items instead of 6. You can adjust this to more items or less, depending on the radius of your larger circle. Once this is done, just press enter. Next thing, I'm going to start to organize my drawing by creating a lines layer. So I'm going to create a new layer, I'm going to call it lines, okay? And I'm going to assign it the red color, as I usually do with my uh, lines layers. And then I'm going to create another one, and I'm going to call it uh, base or just column okay and this one is going to be blue okay i'm going to make my lines layer current i'm going to select everything and move it into my lines layer all right now that i have this uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch the perspective using the orbit command so i have a 3d perspective of what i'm doing Okay, uh, and I'm going to change my layer from lines to column. Okay, and now I'm going to use the press pull command. Okay, I'm going to press pull first the inner, okay, of my uh, circle. And I'm going to go up uh, maybe 300 units. I'm going to put 300, enter. All right, I'm going to zoom out. I have my column that is going to be three hundred units of height. If I want to see it better, I can click instead, uh, switch from wireframe to conceptual mode. And now you see that I'm getting, you know, a column with those uh, very common indentations uh, that Doric columns have. For our next step, uh, I need for the column to end, for these indentations to end, you know, with an arch, you know, on this manner. So, what I need to do is, I'm going to create another circle here. Let me change to my lines layer. Okay. I'm going to create a circle here that is going to be 50 units. Okay. Same, same than the main column. Now I'm going to uh, click on, I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to draw another circle. See, enter. I'm going to use the quadrant again. So, quadrant. Okay, let's do it here and it's gonna be five units same thing that we did before but this time I want this arch to be facing on the z-axis so I'm gonna use 3d rotate and enter press on that circle enter I'm gonna select this axis okay and I'm gonna type 90 okay Oops, so that didn't work let's see here 90 enter there you go and now I just rotate that 90 degrees with that in mind I, I want to zoom out and I'm gonna use press pull okay and I'm gonna press pull this a certain amount I'm gonna make sure that I have enough space okay and now I'm gonna also press pull this but I'm gonna do it inside okay I'm gonna do it inside a certain amount stuck here now you didn't see it but if I rotate you see that that has been done ok 
okay the next step here is to use this subtract okay so I'm gonna click on subtract but before I do that I need to actually polar array this so let's go ahead and do it click polar array I click on this cylinder enter the center point is gonna be uh, the center point here so let's see if it catches there you go and I'm gonna need 22 okay units the same thing that I did before okay once that is done I'm gonna proceed to explode this array so I'm gonna go ahead and click explode and I'm gonna select the array and click OK I'm doing this so I can individually manipulate each of these uh, cylinders the next thing I'm gonna do is click on the subtract command okay and I'm gonna select the main cylinder the big one and then I'm gonna press enter and then I'm gonna select all the smaller ones that I created around the bigger one There's different ways to do this I'm just using the one that is easy for me Rotate. Once you finish, you press enter, and you see that now you have those holes okay opened in your cylinder, and it's looking pretty cool. The next thing I want to do is I want to create a new layer, okay, and I'm gonna call it the uh, column top. We may or may not need it, uh, but it, what I want to do is change this color to blue, okay? Same than the base color. And then I'm gonna move this all to that layer, okay? And once this is done, I'm gonna use the move command, move enter. I'm gonna select this object, enter. And my base point, I'm gonna shift right click, 3D object snap, and then center of space. And I'm gonna select this center of face okay and I'm gonna move it on the top of my column so shift right click again 3d object snap center of face okay until you see the center of the face you click there and that's it now you see that we have perfectly uh, the arch on top of our indentations in our dotted column if you want to see it better you can switch to realistic okay and you see that now you know those indentations are very visible and very clear I'm gonna switch back to conceptual and I'm gonna zoom out so now we have to create the top of the column and there are different ways to do this in the Doric style and um, I'm gonna create a more simplistic style uh, just for the simplicity of this video uh, but maybe in a future video I will create different ones or more sophisticated and elaborated ones. As you know, the Greeks and the Romans they created very sophisticated uh, columns and shapes and designs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create here. So I'm gonna start with a torus. So I click on torus, and I'm gonna shift right click to select center of face. Okay, and the torus is gonna be 50 units. Okay, your diameter and the width uh, is gonna be maybe five press enter okay and uh, so when i rotate this you see that still you know it's if you see that it's covering your arch what you could do is select it and then click on this uh, blue uh, arrow and you can move it up or down a few more elements if you want i'm gonna move it a little bit more up okay Let's see let's move it maybe five units up okay that's it I'm gonna rotate and it's looking pretty good next I'm gonna click on cylinder I'm gonna create a cylinder from this side so 3d object snap center of face it's gonna be 50 radius and I'm gonna make it of 30 of high, 30 units of high, okay? And the next screen, I wanna create another torus, 
I could either copy paste this one, but it's kind of easier to just do it again. Click torus, and uh, I'm gonna select central face. Okay, it's gonna be 50 again, and it's gonna be five, exactly like I did for the past one. Now it will make sense for me to change this uh, from this layer. So I'm gonna select this and change it to the layers to column top. Okay. So we are of the same color and part of the same uh, color top layer. Next, I want to zoom out because we are going to do something different now. I'm going to go ahead here and create a circle. I'm going to switch to my lines layer. C enter. I'm going to create a 50 unit circle here, which is the base, right? And I'm going to zoom in, press L enter go to the center, make sure that I have ortho on so I can go in the Z axis and I'm gonna go to the Z axis 40 units. Okay, 40 units. Then I'm gonna create another circle here, see, enter from this center point and this is gonna be, well, our base circle is 50, let's make it 70. Okay, so I'm gonna rotate so you can see what I'm trying to do and I'm gonna click on the loft command and I'm gonna click first the smaller circle and then the bigger circle and press enter and that creates a nice loft that we are going to use in our column so I'm gonna click move enter select the object enter I'm gonna make sure that I select uh, this center here okay and then I'm gonna go back to my column. Let me rotate here. And I'm gonna select, shift right click, again, the center of face. Okay, let's see if it did it correctly. And it did. Last but not least, I'm gonna click on this and change it to the column top layer. To make sure that everything got aligned correctly, I'm gonna go to the left view, zoom in, and see that everything is working out well. Our column is now completed. It's looking pretty good. Uh, what I could do now is, well, if you if you wanted, this is optional. You can just copy paste the top to the bottom if you wanna have it symmetric. Uh, but this really depends on the project. For now, for this video, I'm just gonna leave it like this. Uh, but the last thing I want to do is I want to apply some, uh, I wanna switch here to the realistic view. Okay. And, and I wanna apply some uh, materials to it and then, uh, so we can see how it looks. So I'm gonna go to the view tab, then I'm gonna click on materials browser. And then I'm gonna click where it says, in this drop down. I'm gonna go with this stone and let me see this one this is a it's a coarse polished white uh, marble which is really good so I'm gonna just drag and drop it here and it's looking pretty good so I'm gonna drop it here 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 and here okay I also need to drop it here in our way all right, and that's it. And here we go. We have our uh, column and looks marble. It's not rendered yet, so you know it's, it doesn't look you know super realistic yet, but it's pretty good. I think uh, it looks pretty good, and uh, that's it. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoy it, and if you do or you did, please don't forget to subscribe, and that's how you support my channel. Also. Please leave me your comments, let me know um, if there is anything you want me to draw or any suggestions or comments, they are always welcome. Thank you so much for watching and I see you on the next video.